On March 2nd, 2020, the stock market in the US surged. It was one of the biggest surges that we have seen in years. Also on the same exact day, Robinhood's app would not open. It just completely failed. On March 2nd also, Robinhood announced at 11 p.m. at night after the stock market was already closed for the day that they fixed the issue. Didn't really help people that were shorting the market and lost a ton of money. Some people lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Anyway, so we start off today, March 3rd, and we logged into Robinhood and guess what? You still couldn't get on the very next day. Uh, there were for about three hours this morning, the app was just not working. Now, this is going to be an interesting case because it's going to be interesting to see what really caused this and we might not ever find out. But a lot of people think this is to do with leap year. And one of the reasons why I also believe that it had something to do with leap year is because four years ago, this same thing kind of happened with Robinhood. Four years ago, around the same exact time, there was a massive outage of Robinhood. And ironically, it's happening again, almost four years later, two days after leap year. And if you also look at the API code, there were some weird things happening. On March 2nd, it was trying to execute orders for March 3rd. And we saw this being reported, not from like just one person, but multiple different users were looking at the API codes and seeing this. Now, the other theory of what caused this is that it was a massive day in the stock market and they just saw an overabundant amount of people accessing the platform and that's ultimately what made it shut down. Um, I think that's probably what happened on March 3rd, early in the morning, right? I think that they put a Band-Aid on the fix and the Band-Aid wasn't strong enough to hold the massive amount of people coming to the platform to withdraw all their funds and potentially move to another platform. According to Robinhood Help on Twitter, which is funny because they don't mention this in their official announcement, but 10 hours ago, specifically from right now, they said the outage was not caused by a failure to the code for the leap year. We had instability in part of the infrastructure that allows our system to communicate with each other. And then if we read what's inside Robin's Hood's policy, Although considerable effort is expanded to make the website, app, and other operational and communications channels available around the clock, Robinhood does not warrant that these channels will be available and error-free every minute of the day. I agree that Robinhood will not be responsible for temporary interruptions in services due to maintenance, website, or app changes or failures nor shall Robinhood be liable for extended interruptions due to failures beyond our control, including but not limited to the failure of interconnecting and operating systems, computer viruses, forces of nature, labor disputes, and armed conflicts. So nowhere does it say for extended delays to say anything about neglect. And see, this is why Robinhood's probably never going to admit that it was cause of leap year because if they do, that opens them up to be liable for a ton of damages. And it's also one of the reasons why I think that they're offering compensation on a case to case basis because they do not want this to go to litigation where they would have to go through discovery and they're going to hand to hand over their API and all the data surrounding that and that's going to be analyzed. So their best bet right now is not to go to a litigation process, especially if they're lying about it, because if they're lying about it, that's going to be a much bigger deal because that shows neglect, especially if, if they can prove that it's the same error that occurred four years ago. And so it, it's kind of a weird, sticky situation. And it's one of the reasons why Robin Hood's probably just not going to admit that they were wrong, if they were wrong. This is a big if, and this is what I believe happened. Nothing more, I have no proof other than what I've showed you already and you guys can make your own conclusions. This is not legal advice at all, making that very, very clear. I'm not an attorney. So Robin Hood announced that they're going to be giving some money back to people that potentially lost money, but they're doing it on a case by case basis. And what does this mean for you as maybe an current investor? Well, 
It depends on probably how much proof you have. So if you emailed them at a certain time saying that you wanted to place an order and what you want to place that order for, you have a pretty good amount of proof that you wanted to get out. Like say if you're shorting the market and you wanted to get out, right? Everything past that time period, you can prove that was losses because this is the order that you wanted to execute and this is time stamped in an email. So those people, have, I feel like have a really good chance of actually getting money back from Robinhood. The people that did not email them and do not have timestamps, it's gonna be really, really hard for you guys to prove that you wanted to place an order and what you wanted to place that order for, right? And so that's what I think is going to end up happening on this case to case basis. So if this ever happens again, make sure you send them an email, right? This goes for any brokerage. When you send them an email saying, I want to place an order on this time for this amount on this day, you, you write out the whole order in the email and therefore it's timestamped. So they can go back and prove, okay, he wanted to do this, but he wasn't able to, and it was our fault. And a lot of times they will compensate you for that. And now, again, I am not an attorney. This is not legal advice. This is just common sense in my opinion, is that you want to have proof of everything that you can down to a T, especially when you're talking about money. So personally, if I'm shorting stocks, I'm not using Robinhood, I'm not using Webull, I am using what's known as a level two trading platform. So for me, that's TradeStation right now. I actually really like TradeStation and there's no like minimum deposit with them, but it is a level two trading platform. What does that mean? It means that there's no delay, right? And with Robinhood and Webull and pretty much any type of trading app that's out there, you can expect delays up to 20 minutes. Doesn't mean that every stock is delayed. It means that some aren't, some aren't. Some see no delays, some see five minute delays, some see 10 minute delays, some see 20 minute delays. Unfortunately, none of these apps provide you a table with what stocks have what delays. However, Google does, and you can kind of use that to base a lot of it off of. Uh, it kind of gives you a really good idea. If you look at that table and that chart and how delayed their stocks are, kind of gives you a good idea of how delayed these app stocks are going to be. So I don't know why you would ever short on an app that could be up to 20 minutes delayed. That makes no sense to me. I think that's a lot more risk. Like I use Robinhood and Webull as more long-term investments and I never try to short the market on those apps. And that's personally what I use. I use TradeStation and I use Webull. Now I was using Robinhood, but over the past couple months, just Robinhood, I've lost more and more trust for Robinhood, you know, they had that glitch just not even a, three months ago, which let people basically borrow as much money as they wanted. And it just created all sorts of chaos. It seemed like a really stupid glitch to let it happen in the first place. And then to have this happen, you know, three, four months later, it's crazy. So, I mean, uh, to me, it's just not stable. It seems like they're trying to roll out too many features without really making sure that their platform is stable. Now, this being said, brokerages see errors all the time, even some big, big trading platforms, right? That you actually have to pay monthly to be a part of has still seen glitches time to time, right? But nothing where it goes out for a whole day, sometimes max of five minutes and people still get really upset about that because these are day traders, right? I don't think I know of another trading platform that has been out for a whole entire day like Robinhood, and that's a pretty big deal. But Robinhood, a whole day is just not acceptable. And for that reason, I'm not going to keep a lot of my stocks with Robinhood right now. They have a chance maybe to earn back my trust, but for now, I'm sticking with Webull and TradeStation. Last tip I want to give is never keep all your money in one brokerage. I think that is just spelling out for disaster. Personally, I at least have my money in three different brokerages at all given times, if not more. And this actually is also true from like my, my checkings account. I have three separate checkings accounts. 
Why? Because if anything happens, if I lose that card, I have other cards I can use, right? So I think that this is an important thing for a lot of people to know and understand. And this is also one of the reasons why I was using Robinhood and Weeble, not just Robinhood. For the people that wanna sign up for Weeble and get three free stocks, there is a link down in the description below. And also if you wanna sign up for TradeStation, there's a link to that. Uh, and I will probably also maybe link some other level two brokerage accounts that I support and that I would use. Anyways, I think that's it. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.